Unit 4, Lesson A, Part 3. As we mentioned, this is a six-part series on factoring. Today we're going to learn a method of factoring known as grouping. We're also going to work with rewriting, which is um, something we've done in the past. And we're going to be introduced to the idea of prime. All right, prime numbers, prime factorization. Okay. So our two objectives for today, our first one is to factor a four-term polynomial. All right. We don't have a, a specific name like we do for a binomial, which is two terms or a trinomial, which is three, we'll just call it a four-term polynomial. All right, and we're going to use a method known as grouping for that. All right, and then the second objective for today is to uh, be able to rewrite all right, polynomials in descending order. Again, that's a review topic. Before we get to our terms here, let's talk about something we all know, prime numbers. For example, the number three is a prime number because the only two factors of it is one and three or we say one in itself. Okay, so five is also prime because one in itself are the only two factors. Okay, same idea when we factor a polynomial, whether it's a binomial, trinomial, or more. All right, when you cannot find anything, all right, that will work, no GCS other than positive one, all right, you can't get to the middle term, all right, we use the idea or the term prime or we would say not factorable. Okay, it doesn't mean there's no solution. So we're going to write something here off to the side. All right, and you need to have this down. Prime, I'm actually going to put it on top, does not mean no solution. Okay, there would be a solution if it were an equation. All right, we have something called the quadratic formula that you'll be learning next unit that'll help you solve something that you cannot factor. Okay, the other thing we're going to learn how to do is rewrite polynomials. Once again, this is strictly review. All right, but when it comes to factoring, you have to be in descending order. All right, and when you have equations, which we don't have right now, you also have to make sure you're equal to zero. Okay, uh, so let's move on to our examples here. All right, first off, we're asked to factor, all right, what we would consider an easy trinomial, all right? Our rules for factoring, uh, as we keep saying in class, is number one, take out a GCF, if possible, other than positive one, okay? So when I look here, there's no GCF, okay? Number two is going to be to look at the number of terms. Right now, all we know is trinomial after that, okay? So we would call this an easy trinomial. We're going to learn other ways of factoring, other types of things later on. Okay, so we're going to make our MA chart. I need to get to positive 3 through multiplication and negative 4 through addition. Okay, so when I look at factors of 3, 3 is a prime number, I just went over that. So our choices are either going to be 1 and 3, or we could also say negative 1 and negative 3. Okay, so when we look at this, Again, one, we multiply to get here, and then we add to go this way. So 1 plus 3 is 4. We need it to be negative, so that's no good. Negative 1 and negative 3 is negative 4. So because this has a lead coefficient of positive 1, all right, I could shortcut my answer. You guys don't even know the long way yet. You'll be learning that tomorrow. All right, shortcut my answer to look like that. Okay. <clears throat> Example B, similar looking problem, but now the 3 is negative. And let's see what happens here. First of all, we look for a GCF. Once again, there is no GCF. We need to multiply to get to negative 3. We need to add to get to negative 4. All right. So factors of negative 3 are 1 and negative 3 or negative 1 and positive 3. That's it. That's the only way we get there. All right. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Or we could say 1 plus negative 3, if you prefer. And negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. Neither one of these are going to get me to 4. So this is an example of a polynomial that is prime. So we would say prime, or we would say not factorable. Remember, prime and not factorable, okay, is not the same as no solution. All right, just means you can't factor it. All right, so you got a couple of you tries for you to do. 
uh, in class tomorrow. Let's move on to our second example for today. All right, in our second example, we're dealing with the idea of rewriting. All right. So when I look at example two a, hopefully you notice. All right, it kind of stands out that this guy is out of order. Okay. <coughs> As you've learned in the past, all right, descending order refers to exponents, where this would be a two. There's an invisible one. And this would be x to the 0, which we normally wouldn't write, but just there's your 2, 1, 0. So we would have x squared minus 10x plus 21. Keep in mind, it's a big idea, that when you move, you take the sign with the number. So this is negative 10x. That is a positive 21 when you move it. Before I factor this, let's take a look at b. You'll notice B looks very different too. All right. First of all, there's four terms. One, two, three, four. Okay. Also, we're not in order. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in order, starting with my highest degree, which is two. So this is going to be eight x squared. All right. Moving on, I would go to my powers of one, and there happens to be two of them here. So we would collect like terms first. All right, now it would be negative 22x and then a plus 5 at the end. Okay. All right, let's start factoring this now. Over on the first one, this is what we consider an easy trinomial, again, because the lead coefficient is 1. I'm going to make an MA chart. I have a positive 21 and a negative 10. Again, the more practice we get at this, hopefully the better we get, and we should be able to see that negative 7 and negative 3 when I do negative 7 times negative 3, I get positive 21. When I add those together, I get negative 10. So my answer is going to be x minus 7, x minus 3. If you're not sure why I chose those numbers, we'll go through the list. What are my other choices? 7 and 3, 1 and 21, 20, you know, negative 1 and negative 21. All right. Uh, and, and test them all if you need to. But again, our goal is to try to find it on the first try. That's factor. Okay. Something new today, which is actually tomorrow's lesson, but I'm going to introduce it today because this is one that is incredibly difficult for kids to learn. Okay, And it also fits, fits into what we call factor by grouping, which you'll learn in the next set of examples. All right, you'll also notice on, on the U-tries for tomorrow, All right, both your lead coefficients are 1, so you're not going to be expected to do this in class tomorrow. All right, But we're just trying to get the idea out there and get you thinking about it. All right. This is what we would refer to as a hard trinomial, in which we would use AC factoring to factor. What makes it a hard trinomial is it has a lead coefficient that is not 1. All right, remember we refer to this as A, this as B, and this as C. So when we say AC factoring, we're telling you to multiply the A and the C together. So we would do 8 times 5, which is 40. The middle term, what you add to, still doesn't change. All right, so this looks very similar to this. It's just that one extra step where we had to do AC. So this is A times C, and this is B. All right, so all three pieces are being used. All right, so we need factors of 40 that get me to negative 22, and that would be 2 and 20, both being negative. Okay, so the next step in AC factoring, all right, is to leave the A and C alone. and to split the B using the factors I just found. Okay? Like that. So notice, that still equals negative 22. I'm just splitting it. And then, <coughs> we're going to see for the first time something we call factor by grouping. In factor by grouping, we take a four-turn polynomial, one, two, three, four, and we group them into two groups of two. All right, where we do GCF factoring for each grouping. So when I look at the first grouping, I can pull out a 2x. When I do that, all right, keep in mind when you do GCF factoring, you're dividing. So I'm left with 4x minus 1. In the second grouping, anytime your lead coefficient's negative, you need to factor out a negative. So I'm going to factor out negative 5 in this case. 
All right, and which means I'm going to divide each piece by negative five, and that'll get me four um, x minus one. All right. Now the last thing we have to do here is check something, and we always say if these are the same, that should make you happy because you know you did it right. Notice four x minus one, four x minus one. So we're going to write our final answer by grouping the outside numbers together taking 2x minus 5 <coughs> and making that one answer taking the piece that made us happy and writing it as the other half of our answer that's factored this is AC factoring you'll have a video on this tomorrow all right you try problems again are going to be easy trinomials for you tomorrow in class so you don't need to know that method I just showed you until to, to, to the next day Let's move on to the last uh, thing that we have for you today, all right? And that is factor by grouping, which you were just introduced to. Okay, factor by grouping works like this. You'll notice in all three of these examples, you have four terms. All right, so what we're going to do is once again make sure we're in descending order: three, two, one, zero. All right, and then from there, we're going to group two at a time, like I just did and pull out what's common. Alright, so in the first grouping my GCF is A squared. That's going to give me when I divide by A squared, if you go back to your rules you learned in unit 3, alright, we know we need to subtract exponents, so that becomes A plus 1. Over here, anytime my lead coefficient is negative, I take a negative out. So I have negative 64, and I'm dividing by negative 64, both of those pieces. All right, so it's like two separate GCF factoring problems. All right, negative divided by negative is positive. 64 divided by 64 is 1. Don't forget your A. Negative divided by negative again is positive, and there's another 1. Once again, like we said earlier, if these are the same, that should make you happy with factor by grouping because all you have is one step left, and that is to take the outside pieces and do that and rewrite the inside piece or the piece that made you happy. Now, technically, this is not finished, but we haven't learned how to do difference of squares factoring yet, so this is all we know how to do, so we're going to stop right there. All right, next problem. Okay, so writing in descending order can be tricky. All right, you'll notice in this one, I have three y's. It goes 2, 1, 1, and then I have an x here and an x here. It's a crazy-looking problem, okay? I'm just going to take this one as it is, all right? You'll notice it's actually grouped where there are y's with these two and there are x's with these two, all right, that are GCFs, all right? Uh, when I look at the first one, I'm going to pull a y out, and that'll give me y plus 3. In the second one, I'm going to take a positive x, and that'll give me a y plus 3. Now, I want to point out that I said positive for a reason. This sign is very important. You'll notice in the previous example, that negative that I took out with the 64 ends up being the minus sign in the factor. So include your sign as you're doing this. All right. So we're going to check, make sure we're happy. Those are the same. That makes me happy. I could finish my problem by taking the outside piece, which is x, uh, y plus x. And then the piece that made me happy is the other factor. Okay, and again, what this is, once again, is as we work backwards, if we look at FOIL this, FOIL would tell me to take the Y and multiply it to that and that, which is what's going on here. And then I would take the X and multiply it to that and that, which is what's going on right here. All right, so it may be confusing, but sometimes looking at FOIL helps a little bit. All right, last problem. Again, in this case, there's only one variable, so I'm going to be in descending order. 3, 2, 1, 0. Group the first two together, find the GCF. Take the next two, find the GCF. Notice how I include that sign in this grouping. All right? So, in the first grouping, I have y squared. I'm going to divide by y squared, divide by y squared, and I put y plus 2. In the second grouping, I can pull out a negative 81. Remember, when your lead coefficient 
is negative. And we consider this a lead coefficient, even though it's not technically in front, because of the way we grouped it. All right. Uh, when it's negative, we take out a negative. All right. And I think I'm going to run off your screen here. So uh, we should have y plus 2 um, over here. So again, this says y plus 2. Negative 81 times y plus 2. All right. And we check to make sure we're happy. And we have a y plus 2 here. I have a y plus 2 here. Those are the same. All right. Remember, we're looking at these pieces here. Like in the previous one, y plus 3 and y plus 3 are the same. a plus 1 and a plus 1 are the same. That's what shows you you did this correctly. All right, and finally, we take our y squared minus 81. That's the two pieces that are outside, there and there. And then we take the piece that made us happy. Again, in this particular problem, there's actually more factoring you could do, but you don't know that yet. So we're going to stop right there and say that this is done. All right, and that is how we factor by grouping. All right, a lot of information there, a little bit longer than usual. But please make sure you take this time, all right, and be specific here, okay? Uh, if you don't know how to factor by grouping, put it there. If you don't know how to rewrite, put it there. If you know how to rewrite, factor by grouping, all that stuff we just talked about, put it there. All right, let's be as specific as possible. Remember to ask questions in class. See you tomorrow.